everybody who was able to come out on this uh, November 1st. Um, appreciate everyone who's also joining us online this morning, and we just uh, hope and pray that you'll um, use this service as an opportunity to draw your draw closer to the Lord, and uh, just we just thank and praise him for being in a country where we can worship freely. And uh, with that, we start out our call to worship, uh, which is Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Amen. So I invite everybody to um, join, stand and join us, sit and join us as we um, enter into worship through singing. No ear 
eyes hurt, no heart can fully know how glorious, how beautiful you are. Beautiful one I love, beautiful one I adore, beautiful one my soul must sing. Powerful, so powerful, your glory fills the sky. Your mighty words display for all to see. The beauty of your majesty awakes my heart to sing. How marvelous, how wonderful you are. Nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. You opened my eyes to your wonders anew. You captured my heart with this love. Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. Beautiful one. Never be on my lips, never be on my lips. 
Well, good morning and welcome to Surfside Church. It's nice to see so many chairs full today. That's a good thing. Hey there, how are you? All right, uh, just a couple of announcements to touch on with you. Are you going to help me with announcements? You ready? Okay, we'll get, we'll, get, we'll get to the kids' stuff in just a second, all right? Uh, just a quick note, there's a governance board meeting next Sunday after church. Uh, if you're interested in joining the prayer team, let me or Sharon know. We've got a group set up, and we need to let you know if you want to get into that social media group so that you can uh, get the prayer requests that we have there, too. We have the drive-in Christmas event coming up on December 19th. Uh, someone had asked, what is that? What, that, what a drive-in means is that uh, the folks who are coming are going to be staying in their cars so that we keep the social distancing and whatever, the physical distancing that everybody needs. Um, we'll, and we'll be able to bring refreshments to people at their cars. We'll be able to, uh, if we have gifts and things, we'll put them in the trunk or give them to them in their cars. And we're going to have, it's going to be in the evening from 6 to 8, so we're going to have lighting set up out here to try to make it a winter wonderland for the kids and make it kind of cool. And uh, the, Santa will be here too where they'll be able to drive through. And it, we'll probably, we're going to try to have other activities here also where they're going to be able to leave the car and go do that activity and then come back to the car but and maintain everything that needs to be done but it's all outdoors basically and we're setting it all up outside and we've gotten uh, property management is excited about it and so we've got their full blessing for it and so we're good to go so if you want to be part of that just let me know we're, we're building the team we're getting everybody involved all right and then uh, Wednesday Bible study is on for online and youth don't meet this week um, but we will meet next week, the second Thursday of November, and we're meeting at Community United Methodist Church. Uh, again, we're meeting in person. Uh, we'll be outside in the courtyard, uh, so I'll be, we'll have lights set up out there and so on, but we've gotten approval to meet together face-to-face -face as long as we're in an outside situation. So we'll be outside uh, there at the church and begin meeting face-to-face -face again. All right, And that runs down those announcements. So I'd like to invite the boys and girls who are so ready to come on up. Come on up. And you are definitely ready to come on up. <laughs> Your mask is contagious. I'm Superwoman. All right. You're, su you're Superwoman? Me, me, Superwoman, me, Superman? Me. And you, and you, and you? Oh, you guys are so excited. I'm glad you are. Okay. Take one step back here. I'm going to step them back from it. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Give me just a little bit of space. There we go. All right. Now, I want to talk to you about what is up here. Let me shift to this side. Okay. <laughs> Can you tell me what these are? Candles. Don't, don't touch them, just look. Candles, I know, and look at that. They're all stacked up and all kind of lined around and all that. We have candles here. I want to tell you what they're for. All right. Today, on the first Sunday of November, it's All Saints Day in the church, and we remember everyone who's gone to be with Jesus since the last All Saints Day that we had from the year before. So for all year long, we remember people, and we light a candle for them today to remember those that have gone to be with Jesus, all right? 
Yep. So I hope, and they live forever with Jesus, and then we look forward to the day when we get to go join him. We're not in a hurry, but we look forward to the day when we can go join Jesus and join our friends again and see them again. So that's what these candles are for here today, is that they are, remind us that they're alive with Jesus and that we will see them again one day because Jesus is alive. All right? All right, let's take a moment and let's bow our heads and let's pray together, okay? Jesus, thank you that you love us. And Jesus, thank you that those that we love are with you and they're with us here. Thank you that one day we'll see them again when and we go to heaven. And thank you that you're watching over us so we don't get there too soon. And Jesus, thank you that you see us and watch over us every day of our lives. And we thank you that you are the light in our life and that we can let our light shine for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you. Who's that guy with the beard? I think that's, I think you need to ask Mr. Tim or Miss Abby. They might be able to tell you. Ooh. All right. All right, you guys get head off to Children's Church today. There you go. The mystery continues. <laughs> All right. And be in prayer for uh, Miss Jillian, because now we have a full kid crew back there. And boom, they're going. It's nice to see all the kids back. All right, we, we might have to like build out the back here in order to keep adding space. Uh, this is All Saints Sunday, and so today we all, like I mentioned to the children, we do have candles lit here to, uh, to honor those who have gone to be with the Lord since our last All Saints Sunday. And I have several names to read off to you, and so I'm going to read those names as we remember uh, the different folks. Uh, first, uh, as we go down through the list, they're printed on the front of your bulletin there too, but we have Dominic Sardone. Uh, he actually, he went to be with the Lord last November just after we had done All Saints Day. All right, uh, Augie Hernandez. Uh, John Steen, Eli Warren, Michael Martin, David Vatula, and then we have added two this morning. Uh, one is uh, the daughter of Peter Marshall, uh, Morris, Peter Morris, Peter Morris, and then the other one is Billy. If you remember, uh, Joe had asked for prayer for Billy last Sunday, and then Billy went with, to be with the Lord Sunday evening. So. Uh, that candle also represents him as well. So we hold them dear in our hearts. Christ is holding them dear to his person today. And we will be reunited one day. We will be. Um, they live with Christ and we live in Christ. And one day we'll be reunited and never be parted again. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you if, that you are life and that you are light. And we thank you that we find our life in you as we live here. Lord, we thank you that they have finally met you face to face and you've answered their questions and you've been there and they see you in your full glory in your full peace and experience your full love jesus we thank you for how these folks have given of themselves and how they've transformed lives around them and we thank you for the for the love the memories and the the, the treasures that we have in our hearts from each one of them so jesus thank you for your love that's around them Thank you for your love that's around us. And Jesus, thank you that you are with us each and every day in this life and in the life to come. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Let us continue in worship even as we remember them. Let us continue in our worship, offering ourselves to God and our gifts to God. Let us offer our offerings to him. You have led me to the sadness I have carried this pain On a back bruised, nearly broken I'm crying out to you I will sing of your mercy That leads me through valleys of sorrow Rivers of joy When death, like a gypsy comes to steal what I love I will still look to the heavens I will still seek your face but I feel you are listening because there are no words just a stillness and the 
hunger for the faith that assures I will sing of your mercy that leads me through valleys of sorrow to rivers of joy. I will sing of your mercy that leads me through valleys of sorrow to rivers of joy. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. While we wait for the rescue with our eyes tightly shut, face to the ground. Using our hands to cover that fatal cut. Though the pain is an ocean tossing us around, 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 you have come. Greater waters, high, higher mountains have come down. I will sing of your mercy that leads me through valleys. Sorrow to rivers of joy. Hallelujah. 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 I will sing of your mercy that leads me through valleys of sorrow. To rivers of joy I will sing of your mercy that leads me through valleys of sorrow to rivers of joy hallelujah 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 So today we are continuing on our journey through the book of Matthew, and we are up to what actually begins the passion narrative of Christ. Uh, the teaching parts have ended, and now we, we get introduced into this in Matthew chapter 26. But uh, this is a story that you may have heard of about a, a woman who brings an alabaster jar. Now, this is not an alabaster jar, all right, but brings an alabaster jar, a very expensive perfume, and anoints Jesus with it. I brought this in order to be able to illustrate the point, and I uh, explained it to Terry that I was taking this, and she says, you got it already and packed already? She says, yes, well, I guess I'm not wearing it today because it's November and everything, and I was going to wear it, but... Um, this is actually a bottle of cool water, no product plug or anything like that, but this is a, her, a perfume that she wears. And she first started wearing this uh, October, november -y, whenever she and I were out on a, a trip way back before children, uh, but we were on a trip to Niagara Falls. And actually, I, I planned this trip to go to Niagara Falls because Terry had this thing stuck in her mind that she said she was not going to live past 35. And so somewhere in her mind, she said, I'm never going to live past 35, and now we're almost 20 years later. But we, we, she never thought she was going to make, oh, look at the eyebrows. I got the eyebrows. <laughs> she thought she wasn't going to do it. So I said, well, we needed to make sure we at least did a trip, you know, had a fun trip together, just in case something was accurate about this or whatever. So let's go and do this trip. So we went out to Niagara Falls and spent a week there. And any time that I smell this perfume, when she wears it, that's where I go. 
I go back to our trip to Niagara Falls. That's, that's the first memory that comes to my head any time that I smell this. And so that's, that's you know, just figured I'd share that with you. Is, you know, scent is a very strong trigger, isn't it? And there's different things that we smell, and our, our memories will instantly go somewhere and will be someplace, whether it be good or otherwise. But it, it is or been proven that it's a pretty strong uh, trigger and a pretty strong memory uh, connected with that. So as we go into the story here, we're going to read about th this woman that anointed Jesus. But first, we have to begin to make the shift into uh, how Matthew writes this for us, we're shifting into the plot against Jesus. So Matthew 26, starting at verse 1, Matthew uses a phrase that he's used so many different times as we've gone through his book. He says that when Jesus had finished saying all these things, and then, so that always makes our shift. So when Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Well, then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they plotted to arrest Jesus in some sly way and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. So we've introduced, now we're shifting into the passion narrative of Christ. And while Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. And when the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. And aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. And so we carry that tradition along and we, we tell what she has done. We share the story in memory of her. Now, the, in this story, um, we are remembering this woman's legacy of giving to Jesus. Right? We, we don't have a name. I think that Matthew probably purposely didn't put any name here because then somehow this, whoever this woman is would be enshrined and there'd be some, you know, come visit the place where this woman anointed his, his head, you know, and that kind of thing. And, and it would get totally off track. So that's not what it's about. What it's about is the act. What it's, what it's about is the love. What is, it's about is the service that was done to Jesus where this woman comes and just makes this, this offering, makes this gift to him. Now, the disciples, they were, you know, they're thinking, here's another theological lesson. They've been walking with Jesus for three years, and they've heard Jesus say, well, we need to give to the poor. We need to give to the poor. We need to support the poor. We, we he's heard him confront other people who are rich about, you know, sell everything that you have and give it to the poor, and then you'll, get, you'll have great treasures in heaven. So when the disciples come at this, they're coming for, to, from it honestly. I think they're hoping that maybe this time they get the right answer in Sunday school, and they go, why this waste? This woman could have sold, this could have been sold. Instead of being poured on your head, this could have been sold and the money given to the poor. And they're like high-fiving each other. We finally learned. We finally learned. We finally got the right answer after all these years. We finally figured it out. And Jesus turns around and says to him, why are you giving her such a hard time? They're like, dang it, we missed it again. But why are you giving her such a hard time? You, you, the poor you will always have with you, but you won't always have me. And somewhere in that, I think, a little bit of shade starts to come into the room. A little bit of a shift comes. Jesus is not hiding anything from them. He's been talking to them this whole time, saying, we're going to be going to Jerusalem. When we're in Jerusalem, the chief priests are going to hand me over. They're, the Son of Man's going to die. And they've been hearing this, hearing this, hearing this, but it hasn't been sinking in. And here now, while they're gathered at a meal, and they're gathered together here, then Jesus brings this up again and says, you won't always have me. What she's done, she's done a beautiful thing to prepare me for burial. What? And so the tone starts to shift a little bit. Now this doesn't mean that, well, we can always put off giving to the poor or anything like that. None of that's being taught in all this. What's being taught is what we've experienced, what happens. Jesus is saying, I'm physically with you now. I will not be, in a few days, I'm not going to be physically with you anymore. And then I'm going to ascend into heaven and I'll, I'll be there and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. But I, you're not going to be just walking up and waking up with me and walking around with me and having meals with me. And you're, going, you're not going to be able to play, you know, slap high five with me and all that kind of stuff. Uh, th this is coming. All right. But now we come around, though, we remember here a legacy of giving to Jesus. 
And this, the woman has been remembered over the centuries. And we also, we looked at this at Hebrews chapter 12, as we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, all right, and let us put off the sin that so easily entangles and let's run the race that's set before us. If you go to the chapter before Hebrews 11, it's called the faith chapter. It lists out all these names of different people and what and their legacy of how they believed in God and how it was credited to them as righteousness and how they moved on. And as we remember our loved ones who are represented by candles on the table today or have been represented by candles on tables in churches in years past, we're just re remembered in our hearts that we've had what we remember the legacy that they leave. And for those in Hebrews, part of what's there is they, they gave and they believed God and they walked with God and they had loss and they had victories and they had loss and they had victories. They had laughter. They had tears. They had persecutions. They had death. They had d miracles. They had all kinds of things. But they were still waiting for what was promised to come. And this woman that comes and anoints Jesus, she's in, in this part and her story and her legacy is there and she's still waiting for what is to come. And for the folks that we remember and folks that we have remembered here and for ourselves, we're still, we, we have had all the drama of life. They've had the drama of life. And for some of us, the drama that's here on the candles is still very real and close to us. Some of it is very recent, as of this week, as of days. But we have Christ with us, and we're still looking forward, as they were looking forward, to the promise of when Jesus Christ returns and comes again. But there's a legacy. We remember the legacy. We remember what they've given. We remember the things that they've done. And so as we look at this, what will we remember? Or what will be remembered of us when our name is read and our life is honored on the first Sunday of November? What will people remember? What will be the thing that comes to their mind about me? about you whenever that day comes. Now, we, Jesus, for this, this was a, a beautiful thing that she did. Jesus said, this, she's done a beautiful thing for me. She's prepared me for burial. And so this, this jar, this ointment jar, it was broken. It was opened. It was poured out over his head. It goes all over his hair, down over his beard. It's poured all over him, and it fills, the smell fills the room. I'm not going to do that to us here. We're going to take this and just pour it out all over the place because it'd be like, it would be like, it filled the room. All right. This smell that came off of this perfume, a beautiful perfume, fills the entire room. But it didn't just fill the room that day. I'm wondering, and I'm pretty sure, I mean, have you ever, have you ever cooked a food or done a job or been someplace where you get smell in your hair? Have you ever played someplace with music or something and the smell got in your hair? And then, <laughs> my musician's over here. <laughs> and then, a couple of days later, it's like, you know, if, if you didn't go wash your hair, you know, you're still like, oh, I still smell it in there, right? I still smell it in there. I don't know that, you know, back then they weren't running to go take baths and showers and washing their hair all the time. So uh, I'm thinking that in Bethany that filled the room, in the upper room, I wonder how much they smelled it. As Jesus turned his head one way or the other, and it would have would it filter through the room among everything else? As Jesus knelt in front of each disciple and washed their feet, were they smelling it come on off his hair? And their mind was snapping back to a few days ago. Whenever they went to the garden and Jesus was praying, and he was saying, Lord, if there's some other way, if there's some other way for this to happen, and the sweat started coming and like drops of blood falling off of him, I wonder if as he's in agony with his God, as he's in agony with his heavenly father, and he's pleading for some other way for this to come around, if there wasn't any kind of comfort as the breeze would blow through his hair and come across, and he'd catch a whiff of that, and he'd remember just a few days ago when things were so much quieter, relatively speaking, in that home in Bethany. And then as he's brought to trial and he's arrested and he's standing before the, the religious leaders who are making all these different accusations at him and so on, and as they're slapping him in the face, I wonder what the slap that came, whether some of that perfume came across and he was able to smell that. And with each lash that came as he was scourged, as his hair is falling around his face, I wonder if that somewhere gave him a mental place to go and rest in. And to remember why. 
I wonder if the smell was still there and could still be smelled as he's hanging on the cross and insult after insult's coming and the breezes are wafting by and, his, and the blood's coming down as well. And I wonder if mingled with all that sweat, mingled with all that spit, mingled with all that blood smell, if somewhere in there was that perfume. And he says, this is why I'm here. And somewhere he could go back a couple days and just find some rest and go back to that place for just a few minutes. And then I wonder, after he shouted, it is finished, when they came to take his, his body down off the cross, if those that is, they carried him to lay him in the tomb, if somewhere in the midst of all of that, there was still the smell of the perfume, still the smell of a meal, and what happened in that meal only a few days prior to all of this. The woman's legacy. Being able to give Jesus something to connect with, something to escape with, something to remember, some place to be in the midst of everything else, in the midst of the horror that was going on around him. Even though he chose it, even though that was his destiny, even though that was his mission, this gift that was given to him by this woman was so much more profound, I think, than what the words on the page give it. And yet it was such a small thing. I mean, it was huge in cost. Yeah, this, this, this perfume was expensive stuff. The jar itself was very expensive. And so she went to great expense to get this gift. But then what was, what was in the giving? Was there anything for her in this? Was there anything where she's like, I'm going to be, wait, if I do this, I'll be recorded in scripture for all time. And it'll be my legacy. There's not, I don't think any of this is anywhere in her mind. If anything, it's like, how dare I get close enough to him? Will I, get, will I even be able to get there? Will the men that are in the way block me? Will they ridicule me? Will everyone be upset with me about it? Whenever I come in, in and I come into this meal and I come and do this and approach him and I'm bold enough to pour this over his head. Well, what will happen to me in all of this? She says, I don't care. I care too much for him. There's too much flowing for me in this. I need to make this offering. And so she puts the plan together and she says, uh, with disregard for herself, she says, I need to do this for this man. I need to do this for my Savior. I need to do this for the Messiah. And so leaving all of her personal stuff aside and risk to herself, she comes and she anoints his head and she gets what she, partly what she's worried about because the first thing that happens is the 12 men in the room turn around and start deriding her and, cast, and yelling at her and saying, what's wrong with you? And Jesus, don't you see what she just did? This should have been given to the poor. What? And Jesus, as he's done so many times, when the men stand up and start pointing fingers, he shuts them up. He says, she's done a beautiful thing for me. Her legacy. A small act. Cost her much, but a small act to prepare our Savior for the days ahead and the moments ahead. And no wonder, I think, Jesus says that what she's done for me will be shared for generation and generation and generation and generation after that. The gift that you give to Jesus, the legacy that you leave, the gift that you give to Jesus might be great, might be small, but it'll be remembered by generations. It'll be remembered by your children. It'll be remembered by your grandchildren. The, how they're being shaped, how they're being molded, and there may be times whenever you do beautiful things that are totally misunderstood. That can happen. But it'll be remembered. It'll be shaping. It'll be something. I don't know. Whenever I go to memorial services and people share, you know, I... I, I I sit down and I pre-plan with folks and we come up with different, you know, different things they want to be remembered for and so on. But whenever people stand up and share, it's sometimes it's the smallest and littlest things that stick out. That this person be like, I, I'm sure if they were able to stand up and speak, like I had no idea that that had that much of an impact on you. So even the littlest things that we offer to Jesus make big differences. The gift that you give to Jesus may only be remembered by one person, by one person maybe. But when would that memory come? Maybe that memory comes in a key moment of despair, even as the perfume came across Jesus' 
knows in the time whenever he was in the middle of all that despair that he was going through. Maybe it comes through in a key moment of despair and brings hope. Brings hope. Like I said, I don't think the woman in this story had any idea that her act would be included in the scripture to be read for thousands of years. It wasn't her goal. It wasn't her ambition. It was simply to honor, to serve, and to care. And from our simple, from our simple selfless acts, Jesus brings about great things. We remember the woman's gift with this story. We remember the gifts of our friends and our families with these candles. I remember my trip to Niagara Falls. There's another gift that we remember today. And we remember it with bread and with juice. We remember Jesus' gift to us, even as he, I think, was supported by the gift that the woman gave him. We remember his going to the cross. We remember his resurrection. But we remember that before even all that came, somewhere between his anointing by this woman and his going to the cross, he had another meal with his disciples, with his followers in an upper room. And there he took bread, and knowing that we need things to touch, knowing that we have senses and the sensory helps us. He said here, and he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said to them, take this and eat this. This is my body given for you. And I wonder if as he said that, the room started to have the perfume float through. And then he took the cup and he said, and he gave it to them. He said, take this and drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you. And they took and they drank. Even as the sense of smell with all the other senses in the room, pick up the smell of the woman's offering from just days before. And so today we remember Jesus, the gift of Jesus. We remember it by taking the bread and taking the juice. And again, today we're going to be doing this in a way that tries to keep us all safe. So we'll have, I'm going to use hand sanitizer here to sanitize my hands. We'll have individual pieces of bread. We'll have individual juice cups for everybody. If it's, if, and I'll take it to you where you are. If it's something that you don't want to do, it's okay. If you're concerned about things, no, there's no problem. But if it is something that you want to take, then we make it available to you. All right. Let's have a word of prayer together. Lord, we thank you for that you are a giver. God, we thank you for the gift of your love. God, we thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. Jesus, we thank you for your gifts of healing and your gifts of presence, of your gifts of strength, your gifts of hope, your gifts of sending the Holy Spirit upon us. And we thank you for, the, as the Spirit moves among us, the gifts are there of, of translating prayers in the deepest parts of our souls that can't find language. And Holy Spirit, you become that language and you bring it before our Father in heaven. We thank you for the, the, the gift of comfort that comes and a peace that the world cannot take away. We thank you that that comes from you as well in the gifts. And we thank you for the gifts of the bread and the juice that we're going to have. Lord, we thank you that, that it can be for us remembering the body and the blood of Christ. Jesus, that we remember your sacrifice for us and your love for us. And as we t have this time and as we come before you with this, Lord, we we offer up to you the things that are sweet in our lives. We offer up to you our praise and our worship. We offer up to you the, the acts of service that we have done. But Lord, we also offer up to you the things that are not sweet in our lives and the things that are dark in our lives. We offer up to you sin, Lord, sins that, that we have, you know, transgressions that we've willfully chosen to do. And God, we confess them to you and we ask your forgiveness. And we receive that gift of forgiveness. God, for the things that we've, we've, we've accidentally done and we aren't aware, Lord, we confess them to you when we know we do these things and we ask for your forgiveness and we receive it. Lord, for the things that you've been moving us in our life to do and we've been resisting the move of your spirit for one reason or another, God, we confess those to you and we ask your forgiveness and we receive it. And Lord, we receive, we receive the gift of, of being just washed completely clean. Lord, we receive the, this, this promise that even though our garments would be stained like scarlet, you washed them as clean as snow, pure white. 
Lord, thank you that you take off the rags and you dress us in clean, white clothes. So, Lord, this is, we start again with you to this day. We receive from you a new beginning, a fresh start. We thank you for that legacy of your life and of your ministry. Amen. Christ took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat this. So if you'll cup your hands, I'll just drop it into your hands so that we don't have folks touching this. And I'll know who would like some and who says not right now. Notice the cups are still sealed. Oh. Wonder what din dinner conversation was in the upper room. Jesus took the wine, we use juice, but he took the wine and he passed it around to the disciples and said, take this and drink this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you, for the forgiveness of sins.
drink this and let it bring comfort and peace to your heart and to your soul. So we continue on in worship. We use these last couple of songs to continue to be a way that we lift up our hearts to the Lord in thankfulness, in prayer, in praise, in listening. Uh, let this be a time of worship where we open ourselves up in just another way to continue to let this very Spirit of God move through us. And as He, as he moves across us, uh, even as a perfume moves across the room, May the miracles that we need in our life begin to flow. May the places that we've kept the door shut to him because of hurt or, or misunderstanding or because of the questions that we have, uh, may we crack the door just a little bit so that his spirit can flow in there and begin to do the healing process. May the atmosphere change as we worship God and we receive and listen for his voice and for his movement among us this morning. Let us worship together.
you, Lord, for your presence in this place. We thank you for just your love for us and your sacrifice for us. Thank you for just the fragrance of you in our lives. We pray for all of those out there that are still seeking you, that they will find you, that your love will be evident, that your presence will be evident. And we pray that each of our lives will be sacrifices for you and that will draw others to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. We join our voices together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and, and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. We, we exalt. Spirit of God has been with you this morning, and he goes with you as you leave this place. Share him with others wherever you go this week. Go in his love. Amen.